In Adelaide, there are seven Labor seats regarded as seriously vulnerable with margins of less than 7%, including Morialta in the east, where one opinion poll during the campaign suggested a 10% swing to John Gardner over the incumbent Lindsay Simmons. Norwood in the inner east is always in play, and this time Labor's Vinnie Ciccarello has a margin of only 4% against the Liberal Stephen Marshall. And there's a classic swing seat of Mawson, which has always gone with government. Uh, we were hoping to cross now to the sitting uh, Labor member Leo Bignall, uh, who must be sweating with a margin of only 2.2% against the Liberals Matt Donovan, and I'm told that Leon Bignall is there and can join me now. So, Leon Bignall, uh, what's your mood? What, how have you sensed the mood to be as you've gone round the electorate today? Pretty much the same as it was four years ago, Kerry. It's uh, too, too tight to call, and uh, last time I won by 52.7%. Um, uh, with 52.7 per cent and um, I had many of the same feelings today as I had uh, four years ago. You have those sort of 15 minutes where you're feeling really buoyant and then 50, 15 minutes where you're feeling uh, a bit glum. So uh, at this sort of stage of the night it's just uh, sit around and wait with some mates and uh, wait for those results to come in from the booths around the electorate. This certainly sounds uh, like a vastly different sentiment this time around to last time and in fact uh, senior Labor figures as well as uh, uh, Liberals and in fact you heard Kevin Foley uh, just a few moments ago acknowledging that there's a very significant swing on. Now if that swing is on across the city it's going to be very hard for you to hold against that tide on only 2.2 per cent margin. That's right Kerry, I mean uh, yeah, in marginal seats that's what it's all about. Sometimes uh, you just live and die by the swing so uh, yeah, you work very hard for the time that you're in the seat and uh, I haven't stopped working uh, for the people of Mawson uh, since the day one back in 2006 and I've really uh, worked very hard but uh, if there is a swing on sometimes uh, people become casualties of that but uh, you know, I'm not sure whether the swing's on in Mawson or not. Is there any one issue that's resonated more than any other? Um, well, down here we're probably a little bit different to um, other seats in the state. We've uh, had a one-way expressway that the Liberals built when they were in, and it was uh, the laughing stock of, uh, of Australian road systems. And uh, we've promised to make that go both ways. We've pledged to electrify the rail. We're going to extend the rail down to Seaford. So there's a lot of uh, huge infrastructure investment here in the south. So uh, more than a billion dollars of uh, works in the pipeline for the people in the south, and people seem to be pretty happy with that. OK. Well, Liam Bignall, thanks very much for giving us that uh, window into your electorate, at least, at this point in the night. Thanks. Thanks, Gary. Now, Dean Gents, uh, have we got any... It's too early to look at actual seat runs, but uh, have you got any figures coming in that are... There, are, <clears throat> there are votes sprinkling in. We've got results in, in eight seats. Um, none of them are at a point where you could say, well, you know, make any prediction on the basis of it. But what is common to all of them is that there is a swing to the Liberal Party or in the seat of Chafee, there's a swing to the uh, swing to the Liberal Party there, but in Flinders, which is a Liberal seat, there's a swing to the Nationals. But there's no sign of any real swing to the Labor Party anywhere. OK. Uh, Kevin Foley, incumbency obviously is a big issue in this day and age, not just in South Australia, but right around the country. Your leader is a man who... Uh, he was eight years opposition leader. He's been eight years Premier. That's 16 years in the front line and, uh, for South Australian people. Where do you rate incumbency as one of your handicaps going into this campaign? That's the great question in Australian politics. Um, you know, I'm not wanting to make political comments here. This is a, an analytical program in a sense, but the economy is in very strong shape. Um, unemployment is the lowest we've seen it in, uh, in the state. Uh, clearly, we haven't been as good at uh, getting our message across. Uh, incumbency perhaps has been seen in some quarters as uh, arrogance in government. Uh, that's not been intent. Or well, no, I don't think it's been bored. I don't think you'd ever say we're bored. But <laughs> no, no, not that you're bored, as well. Well, they're maybe bored with us. People, people might simply get bored yeah. with seeing the same familiar faces. Well, and and I think out. that's a very reasonable point. And I, I guess people see an economy that is travelling very well and think, well, you know, we can uh, try another government. Mm. We can try another political party. Uh, um, but, yeah, I think there will be a lot of uh, analysis around the nation after this election. There's going to be a lot of very wise heads <laughs> after the event. We, we are going to take a bit of a seat run now. Uh, we, we're going to start with uh, Carleen. We've heard from Carleen Maywell just a couple of minutes ago. We'll take a look at her seat of uh, Chafee in the Riverland District. And she held this uh, at uh, the last election with a margin of 16.2%. Now, we don't have any graphics, but, Dean, you might just... Uh, well, it was 16.2 per cent. On the figures we have at the moment, and that's only a very small proportion, 0.2 per cent. Oh, we're up to 1 per cent. Oh, no, that's light. Go on. That's Go on. a 6.5 per cent swing to the National Party. But we need to keep in mind there's significantly different 
polling places. These two are from Penong and uh, Penong and Gerard Mobile. Uh, Carleen Maywald leading or not leading. Uh, Tim Whetstone's ahead 45% to 39%. But if you look at the uh, the swings after the preferences have been distributed, you can find a different story. Carleen Maywald is leading and well, mm -hmm. sorry, she was leading. We're running behind. Oh, I see, it's the... jumped to 2.2 per cent. Yes, right. Well, so that's changing that before you scratch, Dean. Oh, it always does. <laughs> uh, there's a swing to the Liberal Party here, but 2.2 per cent counted. Uh, at the moment, I'd, I'd wait for booths like Barmer, Berry, Loxton to come in. Okay, we'll take a look at the seat of light, and this uh, includes Gawler and uh, uh, North points north. This is, uh, was a Labor gain by. Uh, uh, Tony Piccolo at the last election, he's got a slender margin of 2.1%. Well, at the moment, with 2.1% as the margin, any sort of swing to the Liberal Party would matter. What we have in terms of uh, booths, we've got Gawler River and Sandy, Riv Sandy Creek have come in. There's a 4% swing. Now, this will be a very pleasant surprise for the Labor Party watchers. A two-party uh, two swing of 4% to the Labor Party. But... Uh, as there's only 2% in, be cautious about that. OK, uh, we might now have a look at the seat of uh, Hammond. This includes uh, Murray Bridge and the rural south-east. And we've got... Uh, this seat is held for the Liberals on a margin of 10.9% by Adrian Pedrick. Uh, there's 2% of the vote counted. Is that giving us any real indicator? Well, the indicator quite clearly is that the Liberal Party is, is going to win this seat. It is a safe Liberal seat. The whole area is, is Liberal in terms of booths. Uh, Adrian Pederick is leading clearly on the 2% that we have counted. Uh, looking at the movement, the swing and the uh, two-party preferred votes, you can see across the bottom Liberal 69%, Labor 307 and there's an 8% swing even in a solid Liberal area. Okay. So Mr Pederick will be returned on these figures. OK, can we have a look at uh, the seat of Finnis, which takes in Victor Harbour and Kangaroo Island. We've got 2.6% counted in uh, a Liberal seat uh, that's uh, held by Michael Pengilly uh, with a margin of 5.4%. Well, it often happens that uh, Liberals, big swings to the Liberal Party often occur in the safe Liberal seats, and this is, this is one of those occasions. Michael Pengilly on 55% of the vote is easily ahead of Mary Louise Corcoran. Uh, it, it does include a swing of 6% screen, to the Liberal Party. So, clearly, the swings to the Liberal Party are occurring in both country and city. Uh, the Liberal Party's been damaged in elections in the past because it's got the swings to it in the areas where it didn't need it. So, we have to wait for more city seats to see whether that's happening or not. Okay, uh, Mr we'll Pengilly will be returned. Have a look at the seat of Elder. This is in the inner southern suburbs. This is uh, a safe Labor seat, uh, possibly even tonight. Uh, held by Transport Minister Pat Conlon with a margin of 15.6%. Now, we've got just slightly less than 1% of the vote counted. Well, it's a bit hard to make any predictions on this, except that there has been a swing to the Liberal Party. Mr Conlon's ahead 64 votes to 50, so no predictions on the basis of this. But uh, if we turn to the two-party vote, you can see there's actually again been a small swing in this occasion to the Liberal Party. Uh, but there's no doubt at all that Mr Conlon, with, uh, with his very solid majority, will win this seat. OK, the seat of Flinders in Port Lincoln and the Air Peninsula. Uh, now, this is a very, very safe seat for the Liberal Party. Uh, Liz Penfold has held it on a margin of 28.4 per cent. Uh, she's retiring, but this, no doubt, will be a safe seat still. Well, the interest here is the National Party, because the National Party's put up a candidate. Uh, 20 years ago, it actually held this seat of Flinders. Wilbur Klein was, is the National's nomination. And he's done significantly well, 21 per cent already. Uh, the booths are... It's only on Arno Bay and Warren Boob at the moment, but uh, even with a swing to the Nationals in those first preference votes, when you look at two-party preferred votes, it's a big swing to the Liberal Party, and uh, I think Mr Trelaw will be the new sitting member for Flinders.